What is up everybody, James Jackson here. I'm back again with another video. If you're new to the channel, I give tips and tricks to camera filmmaking gear, as well as give some tutorials and give some understanding about the filmmaking industry. So if you like the content here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that like and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forward. I have been watching a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of YouTube, I watch a lot of YouTube videos all the time, especially in, in video making, because I'm always, always interested in learning more about new camera technology, new things that are coming. So whenever something new hits, um, it is super exciting for me. I, I always try to learn as much and dive in as much as I can. And I feel like with the pocket cinema cameras, the 4K and the 6K, there has been a lot of interest in these cameras because of what they have capable of doing. 12-bit raw recording at a very compressed rate in a body size like this for at a very, very affordable cost. And there's a lot, and for good reasons. The cameras are amazing. You've seen my reviews. If you haven't seen my reviews of either the Pocket 4K or the Pocket 6K, which I do own now, uh, definitely make sure to check those videos out. I will definitely leave links in the description below as well as uh, a little uh, card that you guys can click on to go check out those reviews. But there's a lot of uh, videos out there that have been doing test footages and doing things and saying like underexposures and overexposure tests and not really understanding how this camera is completely different than most of the cameras out there because of its raw codec, because of how the exposure works with the dual native ISO system. Today's episode, we are diving full on into dynamic range and talking about this. So a couple videos I've seen so far is that I've heard one video say, you know, if you want, you know, the test to see, if you want cleaner shadows, shoot at 3200 ISO. For better highlights, you should shoot at 4000 ISO. Or people have been doing test footages at 400 ISO, which is the native ISO for the first um, circuit. And they're doing over and under exposure tests. But none of these videos, I feel personally, tell the larger story about these cameras and the amazingness that these cameras have and um, especially when it comes to the dynamic range. Because of how this camera's dual native ISO works, uh, the, the ISO you choose greatly affects where the highlights sit and where the shadow sits, how much, how much roll off do you have in the highlights, how much roll off do you have in the shadows. Um, lately, a lot of people have been asking me, why do I typically shoot when they see my footages or do I do my camera comparison? They see me shoot at 800 ISO and, and they're asking me, well, why are you shooting at 800 ISO instead of 400 ISO for cam camera comparisons? Well, especially if it's a shot where there's a lot of dynamic range, what I have found is that 800 ISO is probably the best case scenario for high highlight dynamic range. And if, you, uh, if you've gone to Blackmagic's website and seen the chart comparisons on their website, you will notice that the higher you go in ISOs, the more dynamic range you are putting in the highlights. However, you are raising the noise floor every time you go up in ISO. And then as you go lower in ISO, the more dynamic range you're actually shifting towards the shadow areas. And what I have found out is that I actually get the most bang for buck at 800 compared to 400 simply because there's an extra stop in the highlights. I have some footages to sh prove my point and we're going to get through that. So let me just say, so all the test footage that you're about to see, I shot um, all in 6K. They were all shot with the same aperture of F1.7 on the Sigma 18 to 35. Don't ask me why it's showing 1.7. I don't know why. but on this on the Sigma 18 to 35 it shows 1.7 anyways the they all shot at the same aperture their lighting was not changed the only thing that has changed is me changing the ISO but that's about it everything else remains the same about the scene and I wanted to really sort of match stretch the point so I could show you just how 
much you can actually stretch the footage and how much you can actually pull it when you have a 12-bit raw codec. So all of this is shot in 12-bit raw at um, Q5. So this is the least compression of the constant quality form. And I think this is probably the best case. So without further ado, let's get to work. As you can see here in the clips, I have different shots. I've already color graded them. I sort of color graded them to match the Ari Alexa look. But I want to start with these first three because this is sort of what typically would be a really understanding of a high dynamic range um, situation. So let's go to the color grade tab. And as you see here, we have 400, 800, and then I did one at 1250 to sort of make a point of when to use each scenario. So as you can see here, we got a couple here. We got shots here. Um, if we take away the highlight recovery, if we were to zoom in on this piece right here, you will notice that you will notice that this part is clipped and this is at 500 ISO. And if we use the highlight recovery, we do get a little bit of it back. Now, if we were to look at that same area at 800, once again, yes, very clipped, very, but we actually, it's hard to see, but if we pull back, we actually get a lot more details and you can see it sort of more on the waveform monitors. We get quite a bit more information back from 800. You can see also in the window we have, if you can just kind of see it also in the window, we get a little bit, especially here on the window over here, you'll notice on the window side over here, we're, get, we're getting just a little bit, we're getting, seeing a lot more details outside the window. Then, so you can see here, we're getting a lot more details outside of the window compared to 400 ISO. And if you notice around like the shadow area, so like here, like 800, 400 is definitely cleaner, but if you'll notice, you know, 400, uh, 800 is not still not bad in terms of noise compared to 400. The noise is still tolerable. So the, so the point I'm trying to make is, is that the amount, if you're in a situation like this, where you have um, more of a high dynamic range scenario like this. So if you're in a situation where it's more like this, where you're in a more high dynamic range scenario, it is probably best to shoot at 400, depending on, like here there's probably a lot more shadow, so I probably would shoot at 400. Um, but as you see, 800 is perfectly fine, perfectly usable, and you see we get a lot more wiggle room. We get a lot more details out in the background compared to this. And over here, the highlights are not as clipped um, compared to 400. We have a lot, we get a lot more details, even though we're shooting at a higher ISO range. Now, let's look at ISO 1250. And as you will see here, this is a different scenario. So as you can see, if you look down here in the waveform monitor, you'll notice that this is the line, it's like completely clear. Like I said, it's like 1250, it's like 80, it's like, you can see we totally have clipped. We're, we've clipped. And however, with RAW, you were able to use highlight recovery and get some of those details back. And you notice it, you'll definitely notice it when you go to the, when you come to this part right here, you'll definitely notice that if we apply highlight recovery, all of a sudden, all the details that was in this shot here, they are now all, we're getting a little bit back, nowhere near, we're getting a little bit back in, especially the chandelier right here. It's completely like muted. But if we put highlight recovery, we're getting some of that detail back, but it's still nowhere near as much detail as what we had at say 800 ISO where you got nice clear drapes and everything and every, you still got a lot more detail than at ISO 1250. And that is simply because 
ISO 1250 is putting more of its details in the shadows. Because if you now, if we were to go to where this shadow area is, oops, hold on a second. Now, if we were to go to the shadow area, so let's zoom in and look at and look here, you will notice immediately there is so there is a lot more wiggle. There is a lot more details. You can see a lot more details in the in the shadows. The chairs are, are nicer. There's cleaner blacks. All of the, the 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 shadow area is much more detailed, and that's the whole point. Is that sort of understanding where your ISO is. Now this is where it gets very interesting when we start talking about low light scenarios. So right now I have three different sources. I have a source at 1250 one at 1600 and then one at 3200 which is the second native ISO what is interesting is sort of how like a situation like this where the only light is that's coming through this part to this part is the slap here and then a little bit of the light hitting from this window that's the only thing that is hitting this area and if you notice as I play this through and if you'll and you'll notice as I'm playing this through, this is 1600 ISO. The details are way like the amount of details you have is pretty good. Now, obviously, you're seeing it because it's it's a very underlit scene. It's like really underlit. Um, so there's definitely noise. And if we go to 1600 ISO, which is just like a third stop more, again, super clean. It's 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 not super clean, but it's for an underlit situation where there's literally almost no light. It's pretty decent. Now let's go to 3200 ISO, and as you'll see here as I blow this up, you know, it's not, it's it's still a pretty decent thing, and you could definitely get away with some noise reduction. Um, but you will notice there is a lot, especially if you go here, if you zoom in here, there is a lot more noise, like in this black air, compared to say 1600. Uh, compared to say 1600 if we go here and you'll see while it's still noisy it's not there's still a little bit more details and this is the point I'm trying to make whereas if you go to, and I'm, I got a side-by-side -side comparison video here and you'll see and you'll definitely see it here that if you do side-by-side -side comparison of of where so now I'm about to sh and now I'm about to show you and I'm about to show you this with a side-by-side -side comparison of 1600 underexposed but brought up by one stop to sort of match the exposure of 3200 ISO and 3200 ISO shot at the same area. And you will see. And what you will see here is that, and what I hope you guys are able to see on this video is that while the noise is definitely present in 1600 ISO, the noise is, is much cleaner much cleaner um, than necessary 1600 ISO, uh, than 3200 ISO at basically shot it with the same exposure and same setup if you can see here the noise again still present and it's still all over but it's it's a lot cleaner than it is at 3200 ISO and this is important because if you were to do something noise reduction applies which you'll see here in just which you guys will see here is that applying noise reduction won't uh be as much tolerable as it is at 3200 iso so for example for here i don't have to use as much noise reduction which means i still get a much sharper image if i have to clean up the noise than necessarily at 3200 iso even though that is the native iso because of the situation, because I have much more dynamic range and much more wiggle room to play in the shadows, it is it behooves me to actually shoot at 1600 ISO and actually sh uh, expose to the left, which is underexposed, and then pull it up in post and then add a little noise reduction because it's still cleaner because you get that much detail in the shadow region. So right now I have about like a three, uh, uh, three of the temporal noise reduction on the 1600 ISO and then I have about six uh, six of the temporal noise reduction on the 3200 ISO so you're doing double the noise reduction applied in 
at 3200 ISO, then you are at 1600 ISO. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment below. Let me know about this video and what, hope, and what your thoughts about everything. And also again, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care everyone. Thank you.